Jeg synes, vi skal starte med øh, det med at cykle, fordi det er noget, som øh, hvis man først har prøvet det en gang, så, ja, så kan man godt glemme det igen, hvis man er virkelig idiot. Men altså... Nu tænker jeg over, at det er faktisk siden jeg selv har kunnet cykle, men stadigvæk. De to fyre, som kommer ind nu, de er virkelig dygtige til det. Uh, den ene af dem har vundet 15 etapper i Tour de France, og han har vundet verdensmesterskabet. Den anden er bare utrolig velklædt. Mine damer og herrer, her kommer Mark Cavendish og Brian Holm! Welcome Brian and welcome Mark Thank you. to the Thank show you and welcome Kasper. to Copenhagen. It's not your first time in this country, is it? No, I was here a few couple few, Sorry, I'm nervous. I'm a little bit nervous. Like, <laughs> <laughs> let me get it started. Actually, right, <laughs> right. I've heard like I've heard he's quick and that, so I'm like just wanting to get something done quick, just so <laughs> it kind of ease it. So I'm in control, then I like to be in control. You got something there? Look, see that? Look, whoa. <laughs> He's all the time he's getting nervous, you know, a little bit of stress. I have to be in control. I get, I get red in my hair blood blossom, you know, Mark, he starts, you know, his fingers getting red. But you like that, don't you? I really like that, and I really think it's good that a, a, a writer like you comes in and do this magic trick. What I'm afraid of is that the Danish comedian Rune Klein is going to do the Tour de France, because that's going to be... <laughs> that's going to be awkward. <laughs> but, uh... But you were actually pretty moment, good. I, I did, for I the moment, I think Rune is more skinny than Mark. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> but, but you were actually pretty good at, the, I guess, the trick, because you hit my ear pretty hard, so I didn't hear anything. <laughs> but then something happened, I saw a red light, and why, why do you do tricks like that? Um, I'm a little bit shy, you know, it's, that, that's it. You know, uh, contrary to what you see, I'm kind of, like, just a, a little bit timid, and, uh, yeah, especially in Copenhagen, it's, it's just, it's such a cool place, and so full of beautiful people. I'd say, like, I come to Brighton, what's he? Oh, he's a model. What's she? Oh, she's a model. What's she? Oh, he, she's a model. And I'm like, yeah, OK, you know? I'm like, OK. Yeah. But that's... You call me, um... <laughs> I'm a like, that would be a good thing to come to Copenhagen and see all, yeah, all these beautiful girls. Yeah, it is, but when you're an ugly bastard, no, it's not, you know? <laughs> <laughs> it's like... It's I look, I'm... The one line I usually use is, yeah, I'm rich anyway, so if you <laughs> you know? I, I know that both of you, and we're going to talk about that a little bit later, you, you kind of uh, uh, spend a lot of time on finding out how to look very good. And that maybe because I know Brian has been one of the ten most uh, good-looking guys, or best-dressed guys maybe even, to be more honest, in this, in this country. <laughs> I'm sorry. How, how did you finish? Uh, let, let's just take that one second for that. Uh, we were in Euroman as a magazine, and there were ten guys who were the best dressed. And what, what did you come in on? I should ask number four. Number four? I came in at number he, ten. Well, he would have been top three if he didn't have to wear Columbia shoes. On his <laughs> <laughs> but, but we got a magazine called Sien Hør Kasper. He's going to be number... I heard he was number two next, next week. A in what? In Sien Hør. Oh got my the God. same. <laughs> he, was, he was second just after a guy fellow called Tav Fransen. <laughs> really good job. That's going to mean absolutely nothing to you. I only be once on the, on the cover on, on Euroman. I think Casper, he's been on the cover of Sjern Hør like 146 times. Yeah, yeah. Good job. Respect. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, thank you for that honor. I want to talk, now talking about pictures. Um, I have three pictures here that I think we should talk about um, tonight. Uh, this is the first one. Um, that was a nasty crash. How dangerous is this to write this? Because you are, are the sprinter in the end. How dangerous is it? It's, pr it's more dangerous riding with Hausler because I don't know whether he was trying to crash me or fuck me there, you know? That's the thing. <laughs> Det har vi den prækket bjerg, tror jeg. 
So, so you, you, I, I, what I want to talk about is it, when, you, when you're getting closer to the finish line, do you just let go of your brain and just do right as fast as you could? What, what goes through your mind before? Because you've got to be yeah, not scared of anything when you do no, this. No, you know that little thing, you know, kind of when you drive, you know if you're going driving around a blind corner in a car, anybody can relate to this. You're driving around a blind corner and you kind of think, right, I bet you can go a bit quicker than you're going because, well, you can, the car will take it, but you think if something's stopped around the corner, you know, I'm going to hit it, so I better take it easy. Well, in a bike race, it's kind of like, you know, we don't have that. We don't have that little thing that says, like, kind of, you shouldn't do that. It's really, there's no room for emotion at all. Whether it's happiness, fear, um, sadness, anything, there's no room for emotion. It's a waste of energy. So it's really just kind of, them people, they're not other bike riders. They're just objects, you know? They're just, like, <laughs> like obstacles to get to the finish line first. <laughs> Uh, just real quick, this one also, because this is when you finish, what do you do then? Then you show off, I guess. <laughs> well, yeah, that's the minute you cross the finish line, the emotion comes out, you know. I'm a pretty emotional guy, yeah, actually. But, but, yeah, but most people, I've seen a lot of the bicycle riders do this one. i never seen you finish, so I, I, I wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> but so many got like this. What is this? For the baby or...? Yeah, they obviously just had babies and they want to show it something that... At the end of the day, we're, we're just moving billboards and we've got to display the best thing we can. And that gets attention. Yeah, like, I've had to do it because I haven't got babies. Well, I hope I haven't got any babies. Like, you know... So. <laughs> Depends on how long you're going to stay in court. Yeah. Maybe. <laughs> Working with Cavs is still really going to be boring. I mean, every stage, you know, you're winning or losing, you're always sitting in the car. And you wonder, like, what the fuck gonna happen now? What did the kid do today? You know, but on and off, he makes some headlines. You know, we saw the fingers. I, th I think we have to send to the story. He didn't start the next day yeah, because it was, day was close to the headquarters to UCI, the International Civil Union. And I didn't really like it, trust me. So uh, you went home, eh? But honestly, honestly, the mountains was starting the day after also, so you probably would have been home anyway. <laughs> <laughs> You, you two have become friends, friends doing this. Uh, how good friends are you? Uh, he's like my big brother, my, my dad. I'd have the course director. <laughs> no, really, he's like, this guy saved me from, really from, I think, a career ended in sport, you know, and now he's super good. Obviously, we both like, you know, nice things, but especially clothes, we, we bond together well in clothes, I think. We're the only gays who don't like men, you know what I mean? <laughs> Because I got, I, this is my last picture I got. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. uh, Brian, will you explain what's on this picture? Actually, oh, yeah, I, I believe you know the story, so I'm going to tell it in, in Danish. So, like, Kevin, han var på vej til VM i Australien, og så ringer han op, og jeg ved ikke, hvad jeg laver. Han begyndte at forklare, om han havde købt en ny tøj i Lufthavn i Heathrow. Og så man siger, jeg ser simpelthen skide godt ud, siger han. Og han begynder at forklare den her Dior-trøje og hans øh, stramme bukser og skoene der. Og jeg skulle ikke kunne rigtig få at se det her billede der. Og jeg bliver lige at sidde, og så siger jeg, jeg, jeg sender et billede. Jeg mailer til dig. Så kommer jeg hjem, så kigger jeg på laptopen derhjemme på skrivebordet. Og så siger det er så fandme godt ud, du ved. Så der sender man til dig. Godt gjort. Så billedet bliver stående, så går der en time, så kommer min kone hjem, så siger hun, hvad helvede er det? Og så siger jeg, ja. det, det, det er meget, der viser hans nye tøj. Jeg siger, hvad gør han? Jeg har nye tøj. Det er min veninde, der skulle aldrig nogensinde sende til mig sådan et billede der. Og det er cykelsport den største matchumand, vi har her. Well, there is a reason why you are in Copenhagen uh, today, and uh, it's because that you're doing uh, some charity. Uh, what is what, what's the charity you're going to do? To I think it's tomorrow or the day after. Actually, we got the charity. We got a charity tomorrow, but the one we're going to write Sunday, 12 o'clock from yes. the World Championship, the, the course around Vium, and uh, we're going to have a ride with some cancer people, uh, okay. young people surviving ca uh, cancer. Everybody likes to do in sport, and uh, actually, it was Kev own idea to come up and write with, with, the, with the young kids who survived the cancer and have to continue your life. So it's uh, for very good reasons here in Denmark now. Fantastic. And thank you so much both for coming and good luck on Sunday and I'll see you tonight in the town. All right? All right, man. Good having you.